So I thought I would uh, try to keep this brief for once, because I got a lot of shit to do, and uh, I got to make my chili dogs for Chili Dog Wednesday. Uh, those of you who know, know. Uh, but basically, I thought I'd talk about a 40-minute experience in a lot less than 40 minutes. And basically, um, part of the reason I was sort of like radio silent for part of today was because, like, I had a conversation with a, um, uh, a politician on my doorstep. I'm not going to say who he is because, you know, if he does change his mind about any of this stuff that we talked about, I don't want to be, like, some thorn in his side. Uh, I want to be part of his success story, you know. He'll probably remember that conversation for a significant period of time. Um, especially since, like, I'm not a registered voter there. So he was really trying to hard. Now, here's my thing. Like, just to be completely, like, open about this part, I thought it was fucking admirable that he himself was the one doing the door knocking. Because I had another um, politician, uh, some blonde bitch with, like, your standard, like, Republican-looking cam campaign um, fucking thing, where she's, like, just, like, coyly smiling. She's going for, like, this smart lawyer look. She wants to seem like she's the, the, the toughest cowgirl in the West. Um, but ultimately, <laughs> she, uh, she had her family doing it, and they weren't as passionate as she was. They were doing it because they wanted to, um, support mom or something. I don't know if, if, it, if she, if it was their family. Just to be clear, I am assuming, because it was like a dad-looking person and somebody younger-looking, um... You know, it could have just been campaign volunteers. I don't fucking know. That's my assumption. But, you know, that's the other reason I'm not going to say who she is. Um, because, you know, potential defamation. So, either way, they just sort of came up to the door, asked for somebody by name, which is creepy. Um, and, and just... When I tried to go grab somebody by that name because I live in a shared house, uh, which I need to stop doing because I need to be able to make more varieties of content that I can't hear. And it's also constantly expensive, argumentative, and stressful to live here. So, uh, if y'all want to help with that, there are ways to contribute to my particular campaign uh, in the description. But ultimately... The general vibe uh, of that person is they knocked on the door, creepily asked for somebody by name, and then left with the palm card or whatever this is just jammed under the, the, the doormat. Like, yeah, that's a really good way to, uh, to advertise your candidate. Just jam her under the doormat and hope people notice. Like, we have a mailbox. The fuck are you doing? Anyway, the point is... Um, this guy was actually going door to door himself, canvassing personally, door knocking and talking personally. Now, what I thought would happen when I started talking is that he would get annoyed and walk away very quickly and I would laugh. That's what actually usually happens and what probably happened uh, with these other people is that they just didn't want to have a conversation about it and they saw my fucking long hair and my beard that I need like an industrial strength afro pick to get through the fucking bullshit with um, you know like and uh, nah I'm good I'm good I don't necessarily want to have a conversation uh, that might disprove or challenge anything I so I figured something like that might happen again. Did not. And apparently the feeling was mutual because at the end of the conversation, he was like, you know, thanks for actually talking to me. Like, most people won't do that. And I'm like, no problem. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for talking to me and listening because most people won't do that. 
Um, so just to be clear, the interaction wasn't overwhelmingly negative. Um, like, and he seems to be on the right track in a few places, but I'm not okay with tough on crime rhetoric or fund the police rhetoric. And the reasons I'm not okay with either of those is because the police have already been overfunded. And he tried to claim that that wasn't the case here in Spokane, but, like, I've seen the police here, and I've seen, like, so many unmarked fucking vehicles where I could see the cage through the overly tinted windows, and I could see the lights beyond the grill, and, you know, I could tell what they were doing, right? I've seen some of these police stations, and I've seen some of the gear they get. I know they're on some of them federal grants, you know? And for those of you who don't know, uh, I suggest reading Rise of the Warrior Cop by Radley Balco, and um, the uh, To Protect and Serve by Norm Stamper. I, I read both of those books, and they're fucking excellent sorts of analyses on the subject at hand. Um, and Radley Balco wrote, like, a ton of articles for, like, uh, Washington Post, where he, like, really highlighted the the issues as it pertains to, you know, the escal escalation of force being escalated over the years and cops getting gradually worse. Um, and so I know for a f I know what I'm talking about. And then he said, like, our cops are rated 10th in the nation. I'm like, according to who? He's like, um, it seemed like he had never been asked a follow-up question on that. And so I was like, okay. Um, well, if you can tell me who did that, like, cite a source, I'll be happy to look into that. But. Um, I, went, I went on to describe, like, you know, Detroit had some of the worst cops, and then crime rates fell when people started to basically police themselves uh, and, and get, like, much mocked people like Detroit Threat Management on, like, their side. They were suddenly being, like, you know, escorted into buildings and helped with what they needed and the poor were being patrolled to like you know for protection and non-escalation rather than enforcing government edicts uh and and generally the the vibe became like you know we're going to do for you what the cops don't and the rich are going to help us because they want their neighborhoods crime free um and so like those two things sort of like uh, put me off of this guy a little bit, you know, we, we, we had some vibes on some other issues, right? But ultimately that sort of threw me off, right? And the general vibe of this guy, right? Uh, he had a uh, Republican written on his sleeve. As soon as he walked up, I could tell. And I was right, you know? I, uh, I looked up his website in preparation for this video, and he is indeed a uh, Republican. He's a Republican who wants to balance the budget. He wants low taxation. And so I, I think I know, at least partially, why, um, why, you know, he was receptive to my taxation as theft points. Because he was like, yeah, I don't like taxation either. <laughs> so, either way, the point is that this guy is, uh, he was he, he was interesting enough to have a conversation with me. Um, and we had a, a conversation for like 40 minutes. And he had never heard of the Center for Sensible Drug Policy. He had never seen the Did You Know War on Drugs edition or Kurtz Gazak's video on addiction referencing the Rat Park uh, experiment, which he had clearly never heard of. Um, and so I gave him a bunch of these inroads to sort of 
you know, highlight that the drug problem, in heavy quotes, isn't really a drug problem. What it is, is it's a mental health problem, uh, sort of as the foundation of a healthcare industry problem that's being treated like a crime problem because of the criminal problem that results from the prohibition problem, which is falsely being used as a solution to this mental health problem. Like, l let me ask you, does sending a cop after somebody having a schizophrenic break help? Fuck no, it doesn't. Uh, or autism, or even a seizure, right? So many cases of cops just hurting or killing people because they either wanted to, or were just too fucking stupid to know what they were dealing with. And given the fact that the Supreme Court okayed barring high IQs for cops, yes, that's real. If you didn't know, look it up. Like, and given that the Supreme Court also ruled that cops don't have the duty to protect you, um, and they only have the duty to enforce the law, that encourages an environment where cops are going to go after people like this, addicts and people in need of mental health services, and use violence against them because they're allowed to. And because they'll get paid for it and congratulated when they get back. That's why a homeless man named Kelly Thomas was beaten the fuck to death. That's why Eric Garner, uh, a non-homeless, I think, uh, guy who was just selling loose cigarettes, right, got suffocated to death. Same with George Floyd. That's why they sent that uh, that 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 cop team up the hill. Uh, I forget his name right now. James Boyd, I think it might have been. Uh, where they where they sent this team of cops and they flashbanged the guy and sent a dog after him after they had already shot him so that the dog could maul him while he died. Like it's a really fucking awesome and. Uh, you know, service-focused industry, isn't it? I know that when I went to Burger King last, um, I was lucky uh, that they only tased me, you know? Anyway, uh, the point is that these problems are being treated wrong and badly. And when he asked for examples of prohibition reducing... I just told him, to, uh, and, and crime rates going down, I told him to look into Portugal because it's a really fucking good example of um, decriminalizing and legalizing. And then you watch the, the, the crime rates just go... It's, it's like it's almost directly proportional. Uh, because suddenly... When the criminal underbelly isn't the only people you can get your smack from, and when you can do it in a safe injection site, y you'll lose overdoses because people are being watched. You'll lose um, dangerous drugs because they could be monitored. Like, he, he brought up, you know, like, crime, for instance. He says, like, well, shouldn't it still be illegal to assault somebody while you're on drugs? I think that if you're on drugs and you assault somebody, it should be more penalties. And I'm like, nah, it should be the same penalties. It's the same crime. Assault would still be illegal even if you decriminalized and legalized drugs. Murder would still be illegal. Rape would still be illegal. All these terrible things would still be illegal if you remove the other laws because you can remove one law and not the other. And from an anarchist perspective, I think once you start doing that and people start realizing that the government was a key factor in the culture that created this violence to begin with, they might start to realize that anarchy is a preferable paradigm to republicanism or democracy. Right? And we, we, we had a nice little uh, repartee about 
the uh, the uh, totally not a lab leak, you know. Uh, if I if I say it's a lab leak, I will be spreading misinformation. So I'm going to say it's totally not a lab leak. Uh, and the fact that that and uh, the subprime mortgage crisis and a bunch of other things just created the fertile soil for a lot of poor people who could be exploited out of their homes at auction. And he really liked that point. Like, a lot of the stuff I was saying seemed to be resonating with him. Um, you know, I mean, he hasn't changed his campaign sites or his palm cards or whatever, right? Um, and I don't think he will, just to be clear. I would be pleasantly surprised if he did. Uh, but just to be clear, he seemed at least receptive. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a conversation with somebody with whom I disagreed. Because if I can't do that, if I can't talk to these people, then I don't understand the issues well enough to meaningfully create the new paradigm. That's my understanding anyway. And so, like, I'm willing to talk to these people, right? Super willing. Like, if they want to, you know, personally come to my house and talk to me, sure. Although, if he ever doxes me, I'm... Poob. Let me just uh, say that uh, it would be a bad political move. But, like, the general vibe is that I want to talk to these people because I think that there's some sort of common theme and also because it's basically like having other people do free work for me. You know? He's been canvassing. He's been door knocking, which is, again, really fucking admirable. Like, that he's personally going door-to-door? -door? What the fuck? That's insane to me, is that a politician would actually personally be doing this, because not only do they not do that here, as previously described, but also, um, it takes time away from, you know, potentially other things he could be doing, so that he can actually learn what the voters want, like a politician should if they theoretically represent people. So, I will say, yeah, that's admirable. However, um, I'm not saying his name for a reason, because I don't want to promote the campaign to somebody that I'm not 100% sure gets it yet, right? And probably won't still promote it then. Um, because, like, I looked at his site, and it's full of, like, very Republican talking, uh, and I, like... I can disprove a lot of the points. And I probably will. Like, now I, I've, I've got a little crusade for my neck of the woods uh, to dis Because I think what, what this has sort of inspired me to do is respond to all the candidates in Spokane. Because I might as fucking well, and I live here. Um, but, like, only one of them actually came to my house and was interested enough, enough to, to have a a sweaty-ass conversation on the front porch for 40 minutes. So I was I was interested by that, you know? And and just to be clear, like, I had food I had just made. I, I had just made breakfast, uh, post-workout um, fucking uh, lunch, and, uh, and part of dinner. And I was sort of just like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what this guy wants to say words about. And because I saw the palm cards and I saw the thing, the clipboard, and I knew he was collecting things. He was collecting signatures, information, etc., trying to get people on his side. And I knew that for a fact, you know? Um, but that's what interested me. And also, then when he said that he actually just was that guy, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting because that doesn't happen. Um... But basically, so, that that was the general thing that happened today. And I thought y'all might be interested in that. Because generally, it went well. And I had a nice conversation about the rise of the surveillance state. Uh, the fact that, uh, you know, local decisions won't be possible once the, the Fed gets its fucking centralized currency going. 
uh, the fact that the Bilderberg Group exists and is a problem, and so are all these other organizations affiliated with globalist conspiracy. Like, I went full on like I normally do um, with this guy. I didn't really hold anything back. I did try to be, you know, more inquisitive because I was interested in why he was interested. So that was the general vibe, right? Uh, and I think uh, it went well. Um, and it was certainly an interesting way to spend part of my day. But also, um, <laughs> uh, like, I'm not convinced. Because part of the thing that happened was we went over um, BlackRock, you know, uh, or Blackstone or whatever it wants to call itself right now. We went over BlackRock, Blackstone thing, and I and I I sort of like I I talked about how they're snatching up properties, and he says, well, you know, that's basically only been happening here the past year, and I'm like, yeah, but it's really fast, and. <laughs> You know, they're basically, like, that really demonstrates how parasitic they are if they're coming here because they have nowhere else to suck from, right? And and he seemed to agree with that, like, because we were talking about how they would bulldoze homes and just put up their fucking structures so that they could profit off of it and gentrify places and push the poor out. And he seemed to agree with that. Um, he, but then he says, well, from an anarchist perspective, because I was very open that, like, you know, you, try to get this anarchist to vote. Spoiler alert, it didn't work, you know. But uh, <laughs> I, I was very open about being an anarchist, and he's like, well, so what do you do, uh, you know, from an anarchist perspective? And my response was that um, the money that currently goes to cops is currently going to increased control and that all the laws on the books just make all that money immediately go to them immediately go to enforcement budgets and shit and he couldn't really argue with that um and and, and that money is going there instead of just either building houses or from a strictly anarchist perspective people like blackrock got their property illegitimately. People like Bill Gates got his massive farmland illegitimately. And we, from an anarchist perspective, it wouldn't be unethical to, um, redacted. Not gonna say, not gonna finish that sentence on YouTube. But what I will say is that uh, he seemed somewhat receptive to that concept. And that was somewhat surprising because basically I said, you know, from an anarchist perspective, we don't like wasting things. So we don't like these houses getting bulldozed. And there are so many empty houses just not getting used because they were snapped up by an investment firm with an index fund that all these allegedly green and, and you know, poor conscious politicians and corporations either donate or either, either invest in or are part of uh and and like all this stuff it seemed like a new territory for him like he had legitimately never thought of some of this stuff from this perspective or this deep so maybe it will help you know but like the general vibe was that you give people uh today's word is general vibe because i'm fucking tired and i keep saying it um was that you know, you give them the resources to climb and they will be more likely to climb and that the housing already exists. All you need to do is put bodies in them. Right. Um, and stop pro uh, pro uh, yeah, prosecuting those people for victimless offenses. And so this all seemed to click and I hope it did. Because the way he was talking, it seemed like he could at least move to Team Yellow and be a third-party option. And that might be good because he's already been on the council. And so if he moves to Yellow, maybe that'll change some stuff for the Yellow here. Um, probably still wouldn't vote for him, though. Um, 
but at least I would have had a hand in getting him, you know, closer to anarchism and giving him some actual solutions to these problems rather than the state, which is never a solution, which is why, as usual, we gotta smash the fucking state.